Hey guys, Blue from YG Anime Games. All right, so we're coming off the yeah, Joey versus Johnson duel in our continuation of really, of showing you the decks from the Virtual World Wave Two. So, like we said, we're doing this whole wave. Um, it's gonna be a pairing again, straight out of the anime. Nothing we've pulled up yet. No fan requests. Nothing yet. It's gonna be you know the new character we have. The new deck versus the corresponding, you know, big five villain. And again, this last one saw Joey versus Johnson, which was interesting. You know, Johnson had his Judge Man and his whole courtroom theme. I don't know, you know, it's it was his thing. Okay, so we have Joey's deck, right? Joey didn't change his deck up much since uh, from Battle City, unlike Yugi's deck, which had you know uh, uh, some. Some variations of Dark Magician, one being a fusion with Joey, the other being a warrior version, again, originally made with Joey. Um, and then when we get to Kaiba's deck, where he has more dragons, so, you know, look forward to that one as well, coming down, and then, you know, further down, we're gonna get there. Alright, Joey's didn't change much, it's very, it's his warrior-focused deck. A few new cards, actually some stuff we saw a little bit back, um, the Little Kingdom era, but... The big thing he added was um, the Cyber Harpy and the Harpy's Feather Duster from Mai because Virtual World was after the semifinals for Battle City. So Merrick has beaten Mai. Mai is in the Shadow Realm slash Coma. And Joey's fighting to defeat Merrick to save her. And again, at this point in time, we all know how that ended. And Yugi had to save everybody. But, anyway, so let me start this deck profile because someone in the audience was like, Blue, just stop talking. It's like, All right, fine. All right, so classic Joey cards like Axe Raider, Alligator Sword, of which we have two of. Joey didn't play enough cards to give him a uh, unique 40-card deck. Um, because, once again, of the uh, Alligator Sword Dragon fusion there, we want to throw in two alligator swords to help him a make the fusion a little easier. B that fifteen hundred attack is helpful. You know that's not bad for character decks. Fifteen hundred, good. Competitive and everything else, fifteen hundred, not so good. So two alligator sword. Again, started using it in the uh, battle city, you know, and then pretty much roll with it ever since. But you know what's been always been in his deck, baby dragon. Yeah, I know. I just had that. And Battle Warrior, nothing special. Again, it's his, you know, it's his weaker normal monsters, but the classic Joey. Next up is the always present, you know, Flame Swordsman. And yes, if you're just joining us or if you're a, a long time fan and haven't seen this, all right, what we've been doing, what we're explaining in all of our newer, newer videos, it's step we started doing with this new deck wave release, is that any cards we errata are gonna have a little white sticker right here. So that when we're to play when we're playing the duel and we put a card down, you can easily see this and you guys in the audience can know that card has an errata. We're playing that card with its anime effect or some variation of that. We have again our Google Docs with the errata so you can follow what that effect specifically is. In Flame Swordsman's case, if it's not obvious that it's in the deck, we're treating it as a normal monster. Because that's how it was in the anime. It was a normal monster. Joey can play it whenever. For us, it's a fusion of Flame Manipulator and Masaki the Legendary Swordsman. Who the hell is going to make that fusion? And to put those in Joey's... I mean, you could... To do it the right way, you put those in Joey's deck and you make Joey's fusion. But come on, we're an anime channel. We're going to play Flame Swordsman from your hand... But, remember, tribute first, Joey kind of messed it up in the debut of Battle City. Tried something guilty. It didn't work out. Anyway, so, white sticker means errata, which means it could be an effect, or again, could be a, this is a normal monster. No, it should have been. Last, vanilla, Swordsman of Landstar. It's just, Joey, why? It's 500, 1200. Alright, moving to the effects. Like we said, Cyber Harpy Lady. You know, in memory of my... That white sticker, by the way, is um, because of its name being treated as Cyber Harpy... Or as, um, 
Harpy Lady, technically that counts for the total uh, copies you can have is three, but to help stretch, you know, like in my deck, she did actually play both of them, so our errata for this is that it counts as Harpy Lady in the field, the rave, but not in the deck. So we can have through Harpy Lady, through Cyber Harpy Lady. That's all that is. There's nothing with the actual, any kind of like effect that does something external. It's just the name effect. 1800 attack. So it's one of the stronger monsters in his deck. And it's funny because it's not really even his own monster. He borrowed it. Okay, but. Alright, so. Gear for the Iron Knight. Same attack, more defense. You can't power bump with equips. That's fine. This version of Joey's deck does not really have any of such equips. This one's a newer one for him. I mean, it's it's. It was a brief appearance in the Battle of the Duelist Kingdom era, after the tournament when he played that mix pack with Duke. That was like all Pharaoh Sardin based. That was the anime equivalent of the Pharaoh Sardin pack. But um, Goblin Attack Force, we put it at two. I mean, it is a very strong monster. It does have its, of course, its drawback of being stuck in defense mode with zero defense. It's a newer card for Joey because we don't have it in any deck of his because he played it in a duel where he just opened up a pack and made a deck. We not we're not gonna make that deck, so we threw in two. We could have done done two gear freeds, but we've done that before. And hey, boost knight. You know, same card we've been using before. So, again, Joey's deck has a lot of repeats. Insect Queen um, was seen at one point. You know, it's not very prominent, but it's still the card he got from Weevil. Next card, Jinzo. So, we see, we've seen this, you know, pretty much since uh, he got from Esperoba. I like the ever useless Insect Queen, which takes two tributes and then just craps out little baby insect tokens. Jinzo actually does something useful. Hey, a little bit more attack and he negates trap cards. Probably one of the best things you can get. So, and we doubled up little wing guard, which wasn't normal in the anime. We don't have it errated to that because its effect is kind of moot. It changes to defense mode like a whoop de doo. It's not something that, you know, really. Affects much the game. We didn't really use the effect much. We didn't really care enough to. But it's a little wing guard, or in the anime, you know, tiny guardian. His, uh, you know, love of all things warrior. I mean, Joey's the only one that can play that plays a consistent um, type of monster warrior. Joey, or uh, sorry, Yugi plays a mix of spellcasters. Few fiends, some warriors, and then Kaiba has dragons and the beast warriors, and you know a whole mix of stuff. Here's a beast warrior, panther warrior. Always a cool guy to see around the field, you know. Again, 2000 attack with the uh, monster tribute is kind of, you know, but scapegoat's always there. Two rocket warrior. You know, just because, again, doubling up cards. We went with Rocket Warrior. You know, it was a notable card. Joey, you know, always played it when he was in a pinch. Just, you know, bring down the opponent's attack points just enough to have some convoluted play that always somehow worked. Sword Hunter. Again, that was something he had in his deck with that duel with Duke. So, it, you know, it made another appearance here. It's, so it's new, it's not new, it's something great. Again, Joey didn't add any kind of major notable cards in this deck. He didn't really add anything like, you know, over the top, any kind of, he didn't bring back Red Eyes. Inter interestingly enough, even though he could pick anything from the whole virtual list of cards, he didn't pick Red Eyes and no Red Eyes support. And uh, to reiterate what, we've been saying throughout these duels. Um, none of the duels are going to have a deck master because with, you know, most of the decks, like the big five decks, 
the deck master effect is present in the deck via um, a uh, card substitution, usually spell cards, maybe trap cards. Um, Nightmare Penguin does it in itself actually, that one they made into effect. But anyway, again, in this deck, Joey's deck, um, we didn't do that. We felt, even though we had we added duplicates, he had enough cards overall that if we added duplicates, we'd have a full deck. Um, plus, it's hard to replicate his deck master effect. His deck master effect is the effect of Blue Flame Swordsman, but we didn't really feel it right to add Blue Flame Swordsman. Um, but anyway, so Joey's deck does not have any deck master effects. Um, again, so Yugi's deck did not have the deck master effect included. Taya's did. Joey's didn't. Um, but all the big five do, because they really played more heavily on their deck master effects, and some of them built their decks around their deck master effects. So, yeah, we don't have any extra cards for that in this deck. And again, none of these duels you'll see, we're going to play the deck, the deck master. Especially because with some of the decks where we do have deck master effects, those help compensate for lack of cards. So by taking those out and taking the deck master, we'd be playing with 36, 37 card decks. All right, moving on to the spells. Again, it's not an impressive lineup, you know. Joey, I'll just say Joey's virtual deck is not a deck that we really needed to build a virtual world version for. I mean, Yugi and Kaiba played enough new cards. Joey didn't really play a lot of new cards, especially not ones that we have. Um, but it was it's for completion's sake that he has that the separate distinct deck. You know, it's a little different enough. And now at least if he's doing you know when he blows Johnson, there's cards he won't play that he did have Balsody because he didn't have them in that duel with Johnson or the big five, you know. So two block attack. Double snare. This card actually was seen a lot. The virtual world, it was either played here or it was in someone's hand there. Um we threw in a few more cards, you know, with this wave and cards seen in people's hands. Because there you know there were there were more cards seen in hands that um had some plausibility as to why they were there, you know, the card may have made more sense, or it was consistent, seen in both versions, the sub and the dub. Again, it's not a thing we do often. We really kind of pick and choose where we need to. If it's what's seen in his hand, and do they need an extra card, or is this card totally just clash? But two graceful dice, and of course, two skull dice. We always pair those at the same quantity. They go hand in hand. So, you know, it's been his thing since they debuted in Bow City. The dice cards, they're just, they're always in his deck. Always, 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 forever. Harpy's Feather Duster. One of the strongest cards in the game. And banned for obvious reasons. But yeah, very powerful. Um, it definitely one-ups his usual spell trap removal, which is which is giant Trunade. So this one actually destroys him. It, Wipes the whole field and blah blah blah. You guys know what Harpy's Feather does. Polymerization, Pot of Greed. Two scapegoat tokens. And one of Joey's signature cards from early on Duel's Kingdom that comes and goes, the last spell card in his deck, Shield and Sword. It can definitely help get out of, you know, some situations really well, especially with like a little wing guard. Where his defense is definitely something you'd like to see as an attack. But, you know. Again, nothing like... Um, we doubled up on the bottomless trap hole. Drop off. I mean, he did have a few new traps, you know, in the uh, story arc. Bottomless and drop off. Again, nothing super strong, crazy powerful, you know. But some new stuff, nonetheless, that we definitely would like to see in gameplay. Because that's, that's what it's about. It's not 
about the strongest cards and this that it's cool to see don't get me wrong we love seeing new cards but it's also just to see the new cards in general and how stuff interacts with stuff we already know fairy box gamble which is absolutely could be the best slash worst thing you do because either you get a lot of cards or you lose a whole turn that draw phase a turn that's kind of like a lot in Yu-Gi-Oh! Kunai with Chain. Yeah, I know. I haven't been doing the Joy Voice the whole thing. I don't know. Two Skull Dice. You know. I don't know. There's, there's, not, there's not much to say on this deck. I mean, you guys are going through this and saying, yeah, it's Joey's card, Joey's card, Joey's card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we've said what it does in Battle City. We said what it did, what it was in um, Waking the Dragons. We're saying it now in Virtual World. And some of these cards we're going to throw up again this coming January when we release Joey's Duel's Kingdom deck, among other decks. For more information on that too, by the way, check out our video called The Deck Expo. But anyway, back to the video we're currently in. It's only one fusion is... Alligator Sword Dragon. So he didn't use Thousand Dragon um, this time. We didn't include it. Why could he have made it? And no, he didn't have Time Wizard. He just didn't play Time Wizard, so he didn't have Thousand Dragon. It's interesting because that's one of the cards he's always playing ever since he got it from Yugi on the Boat to Duelist Kingdom. It was always his trump card, and it's gone. But hey, that's up to Joey. And really, the writers. So, that's Joey's deck. Again, one card that they he technically played that they do print is, as we said in Yuki's deck, it's Knight's Title. However, in the anime, Knight's Title um, made one spellcaster type monster a warrior type instead, and Dark Magician Knight was not an actual card. It was just Dark Magician as a warrior. So it was that that on-field transformation that didn't constitute a card. So they made it its own card, Special Summoned via Knight's title. And because of that, we put that whole thing in Yugi's deck. So Joey doesn't have it because it doesn't do anything. And then that created a small conflict of, you know, Joey would have the card and... Joey has the spell card, Yugi has the monster card, and it's dead in Yugi's deck. And currently, his uh, Mirage Knight is dead, but that was an exception um, we did make. Because that comes off of the fusion, and that does need both of them. As we've actually explained, that even though the Dark Flare Knight is in Yugi's fusion deck, were, these, we, did, were we to do a tag duel with these two characters... Either player would have access to Dark Flare Knight for, you know, our dueling purposes. Because either one could technically make it. They both have polymerization and one half of the puzzle. Yugi has the card. That's how, you know, it was played in the anime. But we offer the potential for either one to make it. And then likewise, it would play out that even if Joey makes the Dark Flare Knight... You, you can still special summon Mirage Knight. We'll touch, we can touch on them more, you know, when or if it happens. But, you know, we said it at the end of the Yugi deck profile. And I'm reiterating here with the Joey deck profile that for the title purposes, we're going to make it so that it just comes off smoother. So I've been talking long enough about Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I will close out with... Like, comment, subscribe, the usual stuff. Don't forget, the Joey deck profile is now finished. The next one on the list will be Serenity versus Nesbitt. We are not doing that as the three on one from the anime at the moment because we want to show Serenity's deck duel her opponent in just that standalone. Um, a Tristan Duke Serenity duel. We won't promise it, but it's something we would like to see. Part of the issue, though, is whether or not in real life 
a three-on-one even works just because of you know it's a three-on-one in the anime it's always challenging with the bad guys thanks guys for watching stay tuned for that duel that deck profile the next one you know don't forget that tournament thingy we have coming up in november gonna be a lot of duels 